Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Yes, you're not dreaming. This is not just a tank gameplay in realistic battle, but it's also my beloved E100. And today I have a mission. I want to research my last German tank. So there is also a spectacular scene at the end in terms of being in the hangar. And you will see a something that not a lot of you have ever seen. I've seen it multiple times because I'm a War Thunder addict. Um, every free minute that I can spare from real life goes into this game. And um, as you can see, this is a slide up tier into 8.0 if I'm not mistaken. And we have already some SPA because there are already helicopters in the air. Now the E100 differs massively uh, from the ongoing German meta and it is actually one of those shell catchers. The gun handling is not the very best, you know, slow turret rotation speed, slow elevation speed, long reload. The AP, um, APCBC round bounces very often on angled armor, uh, especially around 60 degrees. It flies off and you really have to aim carefully. This costs you pressure seconds. So to actually make the firepower work, I will come to this uh, back in um, when it's time to talk about this because it's not about the 128 millimeter for me the 128 millimeter is nothing but a secondary finishing off gun or alpha strike gun but it's not the main tool of the 100 yeah it is that bad in my opinion um, it is not useless and every British tanker is like oh, mu high explosive filler but if you can't penetrate in the first place eh. And if you can't get your gun on target in the first place, eh. So I think the 100 has a very, very unique playstyle together with the mouse. Which one is better? Well, there are some fine differences in the very same situation that you find yourself in. There are situations where the mouse is better and there are situations where the E100 is clearly better. Overall, I have more fun in the E100 and one of the factors is that not a lot of people know how to deal with this tank. It's the first time that they see uh, this tank, they panic, they maybe, maybe recognize here my Ignaz now and blame and, and, and then know it's me and then they think, oh god, I'm an awesome player and, and just uh, with their shot or misplay. And, you know, I have done already a lot of videos in the past about the 100. The 100 is one of the rare tanks that has its own playlist or it's the only tank that has its own playlist. You might want to check it out. I also did a tank review on this tank in great detail. It was actually so detailed that I made three separate videos out of it from um, not just only the armor, the complexity, the possibilities, the ammunition review, but also the playstyle tactics and overall uh, situations being featured, um, putting things into context. When you hit though, the 128 millimeters leaves no survivors. Mm, nearly, what is it? One and a half pounds of high explosive in the shell. That's a lot of damage. There you can see it, now the secondary comes into uh, play. I actually empty here the uh, heat shell and then smoke up the area. And there you can see already the versatility or the first hints of the versatility of the 75mm. Without this, this tank would be terrible and I would not get like half the kills that I get with it. I am not joking. It is the main tool about the 100 and the 100 is the tank that just rewards proper knowledge about the game. It rewards tactical thinking, preparation and using all the various tools that it has. Now some people might say oh my god it is already so good and overpowered please enough but that's not true. You see the game that you see in the background is the average game where you don't get bullshitted and that is already only like 30% of the games. And when I talk about being bullshitted, you know, I'm talking about ATGMs, I'm talking about helicopters with ATGMs, I'm talking about the Object 120, I talk about enemy tanks with stabilizers, AP, FSD, SSF, heat of SSF, SSF, SSS. I hate that. Okay, this is World War II technology, um, actually at its maximum in terms of armor thickness, the tank is very slow, mobility is very important, and uh, you get... Uh, stuff in return like you can bounce some shots I knew that this shot was coming in so I kept the turret angled then I saw the 
T92 if I'm not mistaken and um, I know that he's coming so the, the tank turns actually pretty well and I prepare so here I can't fire with the heat shell through the fences but you know this is where the 128 AP CBC round comes in handy and we actually track here the T92 and I clear my way now he cannot shoot me and uh, now I splash the transmission he is stuck and now I direct it how breaks him so this is now the magic of the 75 millimeter if it would have gone bad he could have maybe repaired in time and gotten out of there before I could you know get another shot in also if I would have uh, gotten around the corner he could have shot my turret cheeks and um, if I'm not mistaken the T92 possesses shells that can go through the turret front and that's a 6.7 light tank this is the massive compression that I always complain about but that's not the topic of today's video today's video is the average gameplay the not so exciting part yet rewarding one as we'll see at the end so I love this tank to play I think it is a grinding machine for me that always has its value it never lost its grinding value because even in in your death fight you're acquiring so many uh, RP and um, quite a bit of silver lines as well the tank is relatively cheap to run in terms of ammunition costs but obviously here the repair costs are 20,000 silver lines but since I am uh, actually not a poor peasant although that might change with the next patch because again you know high tier stuff um, I don't really care too much about repair costs if the tank is fun and the E100 can have battles where it's ridiculously fun okay and this gameplay you might see the first hints actually convinces me because there is teamwork there are tiger twos there are panther twos there are leopards there is me and we are actually teamworking there is a bit of communication going on people ping the map we are well spread out we look there is another ping on the map observe the minimap talk to your teammates let them know what you're doing and um, there you can see the massive advantage of the 100 over the mouse because the mouse is limited to 20 kilometers per hour and in a straight line on hard terrain you actually can go up to 24 25 um, kilometers per hour that's already uh, 20 25 percent faster than the mouse and you know that adds up now whether mouse is better and whether E100 better well in terms of firepower and overall armor protection there is not much of a difference but there are situations where the mouse is just simply better for instance uh, if you're in close quarters somebody threatens to flank you you can reverse with 20 kilometers per hour and that catches many many tankers off guard and it is hilarious also the mouse has a bit more uh, ammunition capacity um, in particular if you want to empty your turret so that there is no ammunition in the turret and just if you keep the maximum capabilities of the hull in in play then the mouse can take more shots but you rarely run out of main battery shells and uh, in particular at this battle rating where you see a lot of light tanks where you see a lot of uh, things that have little to no armor then i think that the uh, heat shell is good enough for hull breaking, for deceiving, for taking uh, and for catching enemies off guard. As you saw, um, it's not just okay with the T92 that I saw that he was tracked and I wanted to finish him off and I needed to go through the reload and try to overcome it. And of course, the hull breaking come or came in handy. So this is always an aspect, especially at this battle rating. There are many light tanks, there are many SPAs going around, especially late game when they go in and try to um, dagger the tanks down. Then I think a Leopard has much more to fear than an E100 and the E100 can take the shots and it also can hull break the ones uh, with a rapid rate of fire with the armor. D100 is the perfect counter to SPA. Now let's talk about the interaction between the 128mm and the 75 and you will see some examples in this gameplay or you have seen them already uh, with maybe one or two coming up next. So in theory the 75mm seems to have not that much use except as I mentioned 
the heat shell for hull breaking and also the smoke shell for smoking up a capture zone, smoking up yourself, smoking up allies that are damaged that are a bit further away so you are a very good support vehicle in this respect. But also you can smoke up enemy sniper positions and annoy the living fuck out of them. Like Object 120s, as much as I hate them, they hate me as well. Why? Well, because I can smoke up their sniper positions and with the 75mm I can hull break them, whereas I had amazing bounces with the 128mm on this 30mm plating. You might think, yeah, well, overmatch and interaction rules and this and that, eh, it's, forget it. You know, it's a Russian tank. It's magic. I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I have so brain dead footage, at some point I might make a um, fail compilation, let me know in the comment section if you want to see this. Now another um, thing about the 75mm is an upcoming scene, so there he whiffs his shots and he sticks around and I actually lurk him with the 75mm, I knew that I couldn't get in the 128mm in time, now he thought I fired with my main gun and then he came out trying to make another shot and that he regretted dearly because then I had enough moments to get the 128mm online and as you can see I didn't go through his front armor but he exposed the side armor because he wanted to maneuver and this is where the 75mm is maybe not causing the death directly but it greatly helps in tracking enemies, hull breaking them, lurking them out of cover, smoking up. The 75mm for me personally is the main tool. I always work around it and again I made um, a tank review on the U100 specifically bragging on about the 75mm for minutes showing you various different gameplays, double kills, hull breaking, just uh, lurking uh, or luring the enemy out of cover, you know, mind games, you name it. And this is what the E100 just, where the E100 is so amazing together with the mouse because the weapon system is the same. The mouse has a little bit uh, more ammunition in the hull. Um, I think I already said this, but you know, I had to answer a call. So normally I actually ramble on in one piece. I never make any dedicated cuts um, because then I get ripped out of the flow of my talking. And um, when I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. But the second I get interrupted, I forgot what I already have talked about. So if I repeat something, that's usually when I had to answer a call while recording and uh, so forth. So excuse that. So a little bit of insight in how I do YouTube videos. Now here, uh, why do I park here? I can actually angle, I actually can observe the enemy's routes to the caps. I'm sticking near B, as you can see I'm the only tank near B. Uh, one uh, friendly heavy tank is coming currently from A to B. But I, you know, there is teamwork going on. My team has pinged the map, we had some communication. Um, there was always a tank uh, near me. And I don't want to overstretch, I don't want to roll into the enemy's cap. Now Italy map is a bit debatable in the map design, but again, not today's topic. What I want to say is that I just stick close to the cap, I can react in time, I can come from an unexpected angle and I hope that I don't get uh, ambushed and now I want to relax here a little bit again. Not the most outrageous game here, I had better games, more caps, more kills, more action going on, but this is the average game. If the enemy does not always present itself in huge hordes that you just can simply farm, which is nice when it happens, but it's rather the exception. So this is therefore the title the average game now just in a moment some action will happen and i uh, parked here also because the guy that i killed actually uh, called me out and said i'm in the 100 kill him and there we can see the bmp2 and obviously he tracks me he uh, killed my gunner now i try to angle here my armor my turret in particular and um, I receive another shell and it has taken out the main gun, but not the 75mm. Actually, I'm doomed. I should ping here the map, but now the BMP2 is making a massive error here. Uh, he takes out the main gun, but what is the main gun? The main gun is useless. I would over penetrate him. And so I wait, then I had a ping and uh, now I actually hull breaked him because I had here a, a bit of a shot delay and then the Panther 2 came in 
and uh, if not for my 75mm hull breaking him, he potentially could have dealt with the BMP2. I hate BMP1s, BMP2s, everything with ATGMs, everything with APFSDS, FSS, and he does FSSS, FSSDS, whatever. I hate this. It should not interfere with that kind of technology. But in fact, the most difficult tanks that I have to deal with are tanks like the IS-3, like the IS-4, um, like a well-played um, M103, or even, you might not want to believe it, an American T-34 or T-29. Very often they are more dangerous because they can one-shot me through the cheek. And um, it is always very debatable, but if you play hundreds and hundreds of games in arcade, in realistic, with the 100, with the mouse, this is what it boils down to. And you have so much damn difficulty dealing with them, because then the shell just... the explosion disappears inside of the tank, because of uh, armored layout, uh, armor layout, um, you have the disadvantage in rate of fire, except for the Russians, but then they are nearly in impenetrable if they angle right. Yes, even in the IS-3 with the peak nose design, but I digress. Let's talk about the results. Let's talk about what I just earned in this battle. And uh, yeah, the result doesn't really look that awesome. And then the talisman comes in, a 10% booster, the premium account, and we got just 32,000 civil lines for our four kills and uh, also one zone captured, but 15,000 vehicle research points. And while we were just uh, in the middle field of our team, that doesn't really matter because we unlocked the M48A2GA2. Now, um, here a little dirty secret, because I personally got a test drive to actually make a video about the M48, I still had to research it after the test run uh, run out, but it keeps its upgrades that it had back then and uh, This is now something very nice now. You can see I'm down to 107.6 million silver lines before I purchase it and um, Yeah, the amazing footage begins now I order it Okay, so this is now the last German tank you can see it is upgraded and it could go directly into the um, crew of the mouse and now I have 14,000 or 14,500 RP left. And there is nothing that I can do with it. But the next time a German uh, tank sees its addition into War Thunder, I immediately have this as a bonus on this research. That's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. And we'll see each other on the battlefields of War Thunder.